Hey everyone, Kevin the Toy Smuggler here, and today we're talking about vintage and newer style G.I. Joe figures, 12 inch scale. And I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I've been uh, kind of putting it off because I knew I got a project was coming up in the in the very near future, and uh, finally the project has uh, caught up with me. And if I don't do this project now, I'll probably won't get into it maybe like spring next year and i didn't want to really wait that long it's a it's a tough little project but it's an exciting one something i've had a lot of fond memories as a young kid and stuff like that and that is uh you got your classic vintage gi joe guys and then you know you got your modern uh late 90s and earlier 2000 uh gi joe uh which got the sumbo cartoon versions so to speak and kind of, I know you're probably wondering what project are you talking about? Well, uh, of course, you guys know I do a lot of stuff for Battlegrounds, comics and games. And what I got here is this big old tote. Oh, I'm probably pull back muscle doing all this. And another big old huge tote, just almost slammed full of these guys. And what I'm doing with those, kind of very similar to what I've been doing with the 8-inch scale Mego figures, the vintage ones and uh, some of the new custom ones I make here and there, is uh, I will be re uh, redesigning new 12-inch scale packaging. Because you can get the, this is an 8-inch clamshell that is reusable, no gluing involved, and you don't even have to go too crazy thick with a uh, card so no gluing the cards together anymore so instead of going with a super heavy duty card i go with a pretty medium thickness but i do a double printing on each side that way it's perfect every time no gluing no mess no spray glue going all over the place so real quick boom 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 i just get this from the print shop they already got it cut out all i gotta do is pop the corners and then throw it in here it don't get much simpler than that. And so I save a lot of time. And like I said, and this being a clamshell, that keeps this. And I'll tell you what, my card backs are still even thicker than the, what the Diamond versions came out with on the Star Trek reimagined figures. Uh, I think it was it 2010 or something like that, I think, when those come out. But yeah, this is a, a vintage Spock that I got and uh, cleaned up and I made and I had to redesign the packaging as you can see here the normal one came with just the five characters but since this package it and the Planet of the Apes original package was very landscape these are more vertical so I had to redesign it so it could fit these clamshells and uh, and that's what I am but I can get also the 12 inch scale clamshell you guys seen the one I did of Superman uh, and I, ble I believe a couple of Buck Rogers figures that I've done. And that's what I'm going to be doing with these guys. This right here, uh, you guys remember uh, talking about uh, Jason Mathis, one half owners of Battlegrounds. Uh, he kindly donated, and I show everybody here, all this awesome vintage goodness. Uh, this is the toys that his dad got him back when he was younger. And he said, he, uh, he told me this story of this. Awesome fond memories he had of his dad giving them the get, handing these down to him and him uh, getting the, these was his dad's toys and stuff like that. A lot of great stuff in here. And what I'm wanting that's why I pulled him out because I don't think we got any. These are all uh, late 90s, early 2000. But I wanted to pull this guy out and kind of compare him a little bit to the new G.I. Joe from the. Obviously, Sunbow cartoon, and this is Duke, if I believe. Yes, this is Duke. And some things, the quality is still there, and some things aren't. Uh, some of the things are uh, they are doing, like on some of these hats, they got really nice detail on them here. Got really nice coverings. This is usually about the same. Uh, actually, the older ones tend to have latches and stuff. Uh, some of the clothing's real good, but the biggest thing you're going to notice here is the quality of body. And one thing that classic 12-inch scales G.I. Joe did was completely rewrite how action figures were made. And number one, right off the bat, you got real snap buttons versus Velcro. Need I say more? But 
one biggest thing here you're looking at yes this is not a the sculpting's majorly different between these two this may look better but this one right here is a lot more poseable action man custom hey brother nice to meet you thank you for joining me this evening and one thing i loved about the classic yeah but it was designed to get into any kind of military pose where he's laying on his belly, able to cock that neck back and shoot a rifle. You can pose them out in the yard. I mean, look at this pose. You go take the newer version, guys. And wow, if you can hear that, listen, that's his rubber. It's very high tension here. And wow. These knees are almost kind of like Barbies, the way they pop. And, and his head don't go back. So, you can see, come on, focus here. And you can see here the difference in the posing here. There is just really no comparison as far as posing. And this guy, even though he feels like he might be a little bit better quality, but it's just, he's just heavy. Other than this guy's a little bit lighter but like I said, this guy can get in much better posing, and, and the clothes fit him a lot better. And like I said, he's just articulated so much better. And like I said, with the clothes, like I said, the clothes off, the articulation looks a little odd, but he was masterfully designed back in the day to get into all these crazy poses. Where these newer guys, they are very stiff, I'm trying to show you here. Where he can have more of a relaxed look and feel, this guy has a pretty much a very toy feel. This guy really was made just to sit up on the shelf and I think just to look nice. They had pretty decent clothing on them, but I don't think this was more designed for the kids who kind of knew about this that were younger, but kind of missed the boat because of these kind of getting into the Star Wars He-Man age, but yet they were kind of knew a little bit because they had an older brother that had them, but they wouldn't let them play with. So they was hoping to, I think, cash in on these guys, a little bit older audience, where these were just set up on the shelf and look pretty good. I think that was the game plan. And these were made, I think when they come out, you were looking at roughly exactly $20. I think some were $24.99 when they came out in the late 90s, early 2000s and stuff. But like I said, I just, there is just no comparison to what you can do with one of these guys. And the accessories, now the, a lot of the weapons these guys come with are pretty similar. But, and they got some new gadgets with the ammo clips coming out on stuff. But like I said, I'm going to kind of recamp this really quick just to kind of show you some of the amazing cool things that came out back in the day. Uh, just, you know. The cool camo patterns. Yeah, here we go. We got some cool backpacks here. We can actually compare backpacks really quick. Like, yeah, here we go. I mean, wow, this is this amazing, amazing work. Alphatron, how you doing, brother? Boom. As you can see here. Now this one's a little bit bigger style, but this one I guarantee is a nearly 95% accurate to reality what was probably used back in the day in the late 60s and stuff military wise and I'm here to tell you feeling of the material versus feeling of this stuff actually you can I'm looking at holding it up you can actually you can see right through this material let me give this a see-through test here nope this is a uh, pretty much the same kind of canvas like you see uh them canvas bags. So come on, focus up. You get on my nerves. Uh, a true canvas bag is made out of versus this right here is more of a thinner material. It, like I said, looks nice on a shelf, but you can feel a huge quality difference really quick. Like, let's see here. And yeah, you know, as they look at this old gas tank, man. I mean, just look at that. Just crazy. And one thing that the older G.I. Joes did do, see, the O2 G.I. Joe. Yeah, they hold up so much better. You're absolutely correct, Alpha. 
they used a lot of metal back in those days where pretty much everything on the newer toys are a hundred percent plastic and uh, look at the rifle here just amazing look here very nice. like i said a lot of the weapons that's coming in on the new age stuff does look really good i'm not gonna definitely not harping on against the weapons at all some of them now when they're legitimately designed off something from reality they're really nice but then at the ones that are done more from like the fantasy based stuff uh so to sp i can give you a perfect example right here pull well, this is a vintage i think this is an m16 nice looking all the detail is there and it's really nice scale with your figure here not too small not too big like i said these guys meticulously if you watch the toys that made us on the gi joe product uh one of the greatest documentaries about G the tw especially the 12 inch gi joe ever done i mean and so much great knowledge there and the one thing like i said they they mentioned on that show is the designers of these toys actually borrowed real military weapons and gear and measured them to the t and brought them down to uh one six scale yeah one six scale and uh coming over here to the gi joe versions here here we go this is out of storm shadows bag here and like i said not bad but you can definitely kind of like the swords here very kind of overdone. I mean, look at this katana. That is not the scale. By no means is that the scale. I own probably nearly a dozen katanas. There's no way that is the scale. I mean, look at that big fat blade. I mean, this is more uh, closer to more like a machete at this point. And far as handgun... They gave this to Storm Shadow, which I don't remember him having too much guns. Let me just, yeah, look on switch guns here. Kind of show you. A, it's done in a bright silver. No military guy would be walking around with a big shiny silver weapon to start with. And then there's always, and the, one of the worst things I've seen come out of a lot of kids' things, but it's just a gimmick. And I, I get it to a point, but at the same time, they all come with these little things. Is they shoot those projectiles. You put them in there and it clicks and they pop them out and stuff. So it's neat that it can come off and on. I think that's pretty cool. But at the same time, it just, I don't know, not really reality based. They really, uh, G.I. Joe, even though it's such a great idea, it didn't take them too long to carry over into fantasy too much. And not stay in reality. And like I said, the, the, the bodies on these newer ones just aren't holding up to the quality versus the older ones and i got a, another cool pack here to show you ah here it is i thought i had it on the very bottom here one thing that you don't see much anymore versus on these older ones they come with a lot of these really cool packs and stuff a lot of cool accessory but this is a real small one and everything but i always thought that was really cool a uh, little peg. See, this one's called the uh, see authentic equipment for every uh, movable fighting man is what they called it. So, so really cool stuff. And like I said, that's one thing they don't do a whole lot more is pretty much the, the gimmick nowadays is if you want an accessory pack, there will be a figure attached to it just so they have an excuse to, the, to make sure they sell a certain number of figures. Come on. And it don't matter what scale it is either. Um, I've seen a lot of videos on out lately on uh, on the new Star Wars stuff on how they're you know the they they redone a, a stormtrooper you know supposed to be off the Mandalorian and they put him with the board game which was just kind of wasn't too bright considering he is a ar uh, army builder and if they flooded the Walmart with uh, stormtroopers they all would get sold but not like that. Uh, that game is probably going to be the worst selling game out of the others. So, kind of show you a comparison here, too. Uh, this is where, even though as much as I like the Sumbo cartoon, and I love the concept of these G.I. Joe figures, I just don't think they was quite executed as well versus as, as what these guys done here. But at the same time, these guys was not designed 
in the early 80s. These came much, much later, nearly a decade later. And like I said, in about that time, toys were started. The crazy thing is, this was a huge leap in toy te in action figure technology. Then Mattel did the same thing in when they reimagined this in the three and three quarter size. And you would think at that point, that would have been another game changer in the business to where everyone else would have copied that. But it got copied a few times uh, with Buck Rogers and a couple other smaller lines. I think Dukes of Hazard even went that direction. But quickly after that, all tour companies just went total reversal. The sculpts got bad. The articulation got less and less. I mean, it was a, it honestly, the classic Star Wars toys just look better at their five point uh, POA versus these other guys. It, it just, I don't know what happened, but it just, the whole entire industry kind of turned around, went backwards a few steps. And it took, uh, it wasn't until Todd McFarlane came out and kind of, hey, Keith, what's up, brother? Yeah, about 40 shy of 1,000, guys. Yeah, it's, it's honestly, it's just haunting the hell out of me. It's, it's been very, it's been very annoying. I, I, I'm like this close and it's like, Ur! so that's why I'm trying to hop on here and uh, uh, get a new little start here on videos, keep them pretty much really. So like I said, if you guys are liking what I'm doing, and like I said, I know you guys have been great supporters here, please share around with, with people that you think it might not have heard of me. And stuff like that, because I'm going to be doing a whole lot more uh, crazier. Because once we get to a thousand subs, like I said, YouTube's going to be working for me at this point. They're going to be helping push my videos to where they're getting seen more. And plus, I'll be able to go uh, live anywhere on location from my phone straight to here. And like I said, the only thing I can do live here is uh, straight through Facebook. And not everybody on my YouTube is on my Facebook. So crazy. Hell, Rodimus. What's up, brother? Where basically, Kent, yeah, exactly, they pretty much the way that, uh, if you guys remember the vintage Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, pretty much Ken dolls. And that's how these guys are made. And you can, the quick way to tell that is looking at the chops, the hands. Let's see if I can't get this up here. Boom. When you see fat oven mitt hands like that, that's usually a good sign to what quality your, your figure. If you're looking at one and there's mint sealed in a package, that's what you look for. And when you see more highly sculpted detail hands such as that right there, that looks more uh, the right scale to the arms and everything, that's what you want to look for. That's the kind of figure you want to take out and really display. Sorry, guys. I kind of lost Cobra Commander's head here. Big reveal, uh, <laughs> Cobra Commander. I thought this is so, uh, I don't know. I don't think this is supposed to have been the original Cobra Commander. I think this is supposed to have been some Crimson Guard posing as Cobra Commander. I think that's what the gimmick was on this deal. So either way, it was like, you got a Cobra Commander, then if not, then you got a, a Crimson Guard officer. I don't know. I, I can't remember what this one was called. But anyway... Uh, you know, to me, uh, such obvious choice here would have been, uh, yeah, happy. Yeah, Halloween, like I said, we all knew it was going to be a little weird this year. And like I said, we uh, we just kind of stayed with some family, you know, just kind of stayed at home. Didn't really, you know, didn't know no, no trick-or-treating this year or anything like that. But like I said, we still had fun, stayed with some close family members and everything. But it, all in all, like I said, it's kind of good because we didn't have to run around and deal with the house to house to house, you know, because it ends up uh, being complicated. <laughs> some, some, some of you, sometimes I think at certain age of kids, it, it's a fun thing to do, but at other ages, it's not so fun. So, so, but anyway, like I said here, I just think that the, the missed opportunity here in doing a nice sculpt of a half snake, half, there's a, so much better things they could have done here if it was a, a more legitimate Cobra Commander look here and stuff. And I got, also got a storm shell here. I showed you his weapons. And like I said, and I got to clean this guy up and everything. But they really, like I said, took on one of the newer uh, costumes. I think this costume really, I think, actually came out of one of the comic books, if I'm not mistaken, versus the actual cartoon that we all were used to. And like I said, 
and then and he's even got a I think this is I guess when he turned a good guy for a while. I said I can't even remember that, but still I don't know. Uh it was this once again, but here he's supposed to be a karate guy and he these legs are just he he getting old and he's getting stiff. He needs to he needs to stretch a little bit more. Just not very posable for a character supposed to be a you know quadruple black belt and ninja and all this other stuff. He just can't no posability much for this guy. Like I said, I think once again the the major statement here, like I said, they don't even bend at the ankles. They're just very rubbery feet. You can see there, there's no joint there. They flex with no po just enough flex so they can get the boots on. That's it. So, so like I said, th these were like I said, guaranteed just mostly designed to look neat on the shelf. No play value hardly at all whatsoever. Versus now I have uh, other, which is kind of crazy, other figures that came out about the same time. I think this might be a little bit later. Is this SWAT guy? Let's see what we got here. No, I did not, and I apologize, Keith. It was it's just been total haywire. And my wife actually swung by the the post office we have here, and they're like, "There's none left." So we're going to be trying. There's another post office. Be kind of out of my way, if you know what I mean. But but we're going to check and see if they have an option of a post box. So, uh, like I say, if you, uh, if you need me to send you anything or you need to send anything to me, just uh, shoot me a message on my Facebook, Sexton Creations, and I'll give you my mailing address. I trust you, brother, and everything. But, yeah, I, I, but as soon as I get it, I'll let you know. Let's see here. Yeah, the new figures are just usually the... Uh, the new Joes suck. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Versus you take now this guy, a newer one, as he's a I think tactical SWAT guy. Now this guy is really cool. He's got the great poseability. All the gear here fits perfectly. The details, the weapons look great. The knee pads. I mean everything on this guy, and he even has the head that uh, poses round really good he's got the extra neck action here and like look at the detail of that walkie talkie there really nice detail now this why the, well i know why they took the cheap doll away out instead of going this right here this right here to me even though it's not a hot toy or sideshow but i rather pay 30 bucks for 20 to 30 dollars for this than a sideshow because this guy right here man you can just do a lot with this i mean you can put him in any pose you want i mean and here's a cool the crazy thing he he's just any character that you want to be he, and that's where i just totally lost me out to where these companies go all out on a no-name figure but then when here they are they got the opportunity to capitalize on a well-known favorite character and just Totally missed the boat on it. And this, and the sad thing is, it happened in the 80s. It's happened in the 90s. It's happened in the 2000s. Here we are, 2020, and companies are still taking the cheap way out. And, it's, and the sad thing with it today, and not, I think every one of you guys will agree with me, I get back in the 80s and 90s, before social media, they really didn't, uh, their feedback might have been slightly jaded. They probably sent a research guy out, picked out some kids, let them play with it. Yeah, they got some info. But nowadays, any idiot that works for the like Mattel, Hasbro, whoever, it don't matter, Disney, their main job is they just all they got to do is go watch YouTube videos and listen to what we bitch about and gripe about and say, hey, quit doing this, do that. And Because here's the crazy thing. Me, Michael, Toy Poloy, uh, you know, everybody, we're all pretty much say the same thing. Pixel Dan, you name it. We all, I mean, if you done a collective poll on all of our views on the Star Wars toys and the uh, all the uh, He-Man toys, everything, we're pretty much all between 90 and 95% exactly the same on all of our reviews. So it's... And there's like, and all you guys, the way you guys comment and watch the videos for everybody, it, it is 
so stupid and idiotic that these companies are still playing these little tricks and games. We're not eight years old anymore. You're not going to fool us by putting out crap versus the new G.I. Joe stuff. They put it out there as a retro line, and it's just something that, not really retro, it's just from 10 years ago, and we done got two, a couple versions of those, and here they are trying to pass them on. Like today, I held, a, what was it, the Cobra Hiss. It was nice that it was in a nice, fresh package. But I got three of them over here in a, in a tote. Why do I want one in a box? I mean, really, and, and I don't know. Now, I'm not complaining about the Hiss. I think that's cool that the Hiss is out there. Hopefully, some new kid falls in love with this stuff. But if you... But if you're going to push the retro figures, do a retro figure. They should have said, we're going to do, if they would have just announced that we was relaunching the 25-year uh, anniversary and just come clean with that and then come out with a three heroes and three bad guys, it might not have been that negative of a, of a take right now. But I think it was very ba badly misled on the presentation to what the, are the, are the and here's the sad thing. Let's see, I want to read a couple things here. The SWAT guys, 21st century toys, fun thing they were bought out. The bodies were so the sideshow hot toys. There you go. I'm, that's that's the quality. I, I'm glad you said that because that's the quality that I'm feeling here. I mean, that's what it feels like. That's that's a hilarious little notion that it's. I guess I hit the nail on the head and wasn't even trying to. See. Yeah, that, now the, on the, I'm glad you mentioned the, the Origins figures because uh, I do like those, even though I think they're, as far as aesthetically and color-wise, are geared more for younger kids. And I get to re I get and understand why they're doing it because they, their whole merchandising plan on the whole thing was trying to get these kids that are hooked on those wrestling figures and they done the crossover line with the, the John Cena and all that stuff, which was smart. Just so smart. Back in the day when we had the AWA wrestling, they kind of did it, but kind of not. They did it, and the kids got it. Because I remember in my AWA wrestling ring, it was Skeletor versus Ric Flair. Now they just do it. They're doing the same thing, but it's more blatant. So, and I get the, I know a lot of people don't like the colors or the comic book kind of feel of the characters, but like I said, I don't mind because, because uh, the, the He-Man and the Skeletor does have that comic book kind of feel. Now, the Beast Man, I think that's like the perfect Beast Man that's ever been made. That Beast Man fits in the old line. That's what I wanted when I was a kid was that Beast Man. I mean, that Beast Man's amazing. I can't wait to get the Merman and stuff like that. Let's see here. Right, yeah, and actually, it because it has that comic book feel, Keith, and then I think that was the little bit of a turnoff, but like I said, these, this line was not 100% made for it. These line was to try to capture the new audience of kids, and I get it, but yet there's enough there that I think that we can appreciate. I got a collection of them, and I still cannot find Wave 2, and it drives me crazy to watch all these damn people on YouTube showing that they have all the Wave 2 stuff, we ain't got crap. It's very annoying. See, the classic heads are coming with a bat. And here's the thing. I don't care for the battle armor. I think the battle armor versions was sculpted horribly. I don't like the battle armor ones. I just, the heads look good. And I think the, uh, the Keldor and the trap jaw looks really cool. But the battle armor ones, I, I'll, I'll be passing them up. So... Got some other cool stuff here. I got a, uh, yeah, here we go. Didn't want to dig out too much. Got a Destro here. Once again, crappy body. But the really cool part, the only good cool feature here, he has this neat little head. I thought they'd done a great job with the way they designed this. With the snap-on helmet. And I just, I don't know about you guys, the way I imagine what Destro looked, now, there's a this total letdown, <laughs> I hate to say it, but I just, that is not, one of what I kind of, because the way the filmation designed him, it almost, 
look like silver makeup version of Iron Head. And I, but I think I love on the, the movie how they made that thing. But I love, like I said, I just love how they done this helmet. I think this was so cool. Such great design here, only to be, you know, lackluster reveal at the end. So kind of very disappointing and everything. But I love the design and way it does. It kind of hooks on one ear. Then when it comes around, it's got one little pin and then it snaps behind the ear right there. And it's a nice little snap together. Boom. And it holds together really cool. Like, like I said, so much potential there. But once again, you take the mask off and the reveal is not much of a reveal. So, so anyway, that was very disappointing. Versus, then you take uh, this figure here. I'm trying to piece all her parts. She was a airborne ranger, female airborne ranger. This great sculpt and posability here. Great head sculpt on this one. You know, it's not a sideshow or hot toy quality, but still an upgrade versus what we're seeing with the uh, late uh, GI, uh, the yeah, the real American hero versions. But quality outfit, the colors are right, the feels right, everything great sidearm, and the, and the hands here, great po her posability really feels really close to this guy. From the late 60s they feel about the same weight and the way they're the way they feel in the hand the way the ball the ball joints are spinning and everything these two feel so much alike it ain't funny it, she feels like she was designed back in the late 60s is what she feels like see here that ray skywalker yeah see yeah this is the pilot exactly so, like I said, I cannot find her helmet yet. We've got a huge pile of accessories. And the one that, unfortunately, I'm not being able to track down her pilot and everything. Her, uh, the pilot helmet. And it has the very similar from the uh, Planet of the Apes astronaut where the visor spins down gimmick that they had on that as well and stuff. And I got another, uh, well, here it is. Here's the same version of that with the male version. And I, one thing I was going to check and see, and you can see the male version here. Got the little gimmick where you push the little lever and the, the visor goes down, which is just awesome. Very cool. Got the male Elber, or Elberborn version here. Like I said, and you can see here, uh, went back to the metal clasps. And that's the way you go. If you're going to do these right here, this is how you do it. And I love that they got the really nice, cool uh, trigger fingers and stuff. Just the attention to detail. If you're going to do a G.I. Joe style military action, this is the way you do it. And like I said, you can turn the legs. So much posability here versus these stiff Ken dolls. I would like to see, uh, I would love to see a, because uh, I know, I understand the expense that we have here with a 12 inch action figure. I would love to see Mego get the license to do the Sumbo cartoon in eight inch form and, but really go that slightly extra step and really trick them out with the accessories. Maybe it may not go overboard, but more than one. That's the only thing that, you know, Migo, you know, they typically, if they have an accessory, it's typically one accessory, maybe bump it up to two or three. And I think with these quality, I, I think that would be amazing to see Mego get involved. And that we might luck up in the next couple of years if they skyrocket the way I think they could. That's something we may see somewhere down the line. So I would love to see it. I don't know how you guys feel, but I think it would be very cool. But yeah, here is another major disappointment from the newer line. <laughs> I mean, he just kind of feels ridiculous. Major Blood which, crazy enough, was one of my favorite characters from the cartoon line. But I don't recall him looking like this. I don't know about you guys. It is total... I mean, I think this outfit came from one of the comic books or something like that, but it's still just not 
just very poorly executed. I mean, I think the, the face sculpt, there, there was an attempt here. I don't know. But the sad thing with this character, it really shows off the poor quality of the body here. The gummy, like I said, it's just gummy. There's no wrist spin. There's no upper uh, bicep spin or anything. There's one here. Okay, well, take that back. Maybe I see the cut. There. Okay, it does spin, but very not too, but no elbow bend at all. No elbow bend whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. He really does. And like I said, and all his weapons or stuff are just seem slightly jacked up for his size a little bit. And like, I mean, look at this knife boot. I mean, it's just really, I mean, the, 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 the handle on this thing is in, wow. The, here's my point, guys. If you're carrying a knife and the handle is bigger than the blade, you might have some issues. <laughs> Just total nuts there. I mean, it, that wouldn't even work. Gosh, that's crazy. Not no, now they do. They done a good job on the grenades and stuff. I give them credit on that. But these, I don't know. Pretty much, you had these sculptor guys popping this stuff out as fast as they could, and they did not take the time to take real military weapons and do the math and to do it. Pro and here's the thing: they would have probably if they would have spent a little bit more money on the front end on the design, they probably would have saved a lot more on the back end because of oversizing these weapons and making them so far out of scale it wasn't funny. They probably would have used a lot less plastic in the long run. Yes, I agree with you, man of action. Just a, just a sloppy figure. When I see this, I think... It, I it just think it it feels silly, and like I said, now I hate that because I thought Major Blood, even though he was a legitimate fantasy character in that realm, but I put him on the same lines as Zartan, which is my favorite, one of my favorite characters of all time. But that's a fantasy character imagined properly, who someone who took the time and really thought out, gave a good backstory, and really explained the look and made it legitimate in some kind of real elastic realistic storytelling uh manner this right here is this just like sloppy perfect word uh, i think he's supposed to and then but they once again i have not found that in the accessory stuff and i think he's supposed to come it's the same kind of helmet but i think it's more this same funky gray color so I, I I got a whole I got two bags of helmets and I got to really look for it and see. Uh, but I'm wanting to think it's got a gray color helmet. So and I got one more here to show you guys along that same lines and I don't remember this. And I'm wanting to say this is from the it could be Mortal Kombat. And if I'm wrong, guys, I apologize because just looking at this character, I hadn't bothered to waste my time to research this. But a buddy of mine did tell me that and you guys may know this better than me, that this guy may be worth something. And I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't really call it Baraka, Street Street Fighter. Thank you. Not Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter. That's what it was. See, I, I but I wasn't a huge, Street Fighter came out when I was younger on the uh, the Atari deal, I think it was, or one of those. But by the time that Street Fighter came out, I was getting out of playing video games and doing more high school sports and stuff. So, like I said, I might be a little bit older than some of the people may be watching this video. This by a decade or five or... But it don't take about five years to miss a generation of certain video games and certain cartoons like Ninja Turtles. About the time Ninja Turtles was coming into, I was kind of getting out of all this stuff. So, so I was kind of like borderline there. So... It's a black Darth Vader uh, fetting type. See, yeah. So like I said, I just the face sculpt. Now I have to admit, this face sculpt is is really cool looking. But there's just no paint apps, unless all the paint apps just finally wore off of it. But I know this the this crazy hairdo and the crazy skin color. There is this almost seems like 1987 Sumbo cartoon doing something stupid. So that's the kind of feel I get out of this character. When G.I. Joe went too far, 
because I know a lot of people did not like when G.I. Joe started talking about doing uh, the science experiments. Come on, focus, stupid thing. And it started doing the science project and making these different reptilian creatures and all that other. But one thing uh, people don't re remember much in their history is that uh, Hitler was the one who started all that. And if they would have went, if G.I. Joe would have went more the Hitler route, I think it might have been a little bit more received. But back in those days in the censorship, having any story about Hitler on a Saturday morning cartoon was not going to work as it was not going to happen. So, so Bert, like I said, guys, I think uh, by far at the end of the day here, when you take uh, this guy here, I got to repair a leg. When you take this cool reality looking character here with, with nice uh, attire, in a oh yeah here's the a saddle bag i'm gonna show you guys this right here the saddle on this thing is this insanity what these guys used to sculpt back in the day i mean check i mean it was dirty i gotta clean this one up but i mean but just look at that it's the great detail on this very much like the lone ranger lone ranger uh Horses and saddles had great quality. Those guys really, they really loved their stuff, and they 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 went all out on the design process. Yeah, Johnny West, amazing, amazing work. Just unfortunately, the plastic on most of those guys are just not surviving the test of time. You go to, if you find one of them and it's not broken, be extremely careful cleaning it gentle 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 because if you don't watch it that plastic just turns the flakes it's it's, it's sad I, I tried i got some i've been slowly i got like a handful of little shards that i'm trying to meticulously get back together and i honestly think it might just be better off i just put the putty on it and re-sculpt it so it's just i just don't want to slap the paint on it so just it's just oh this but the design on all the accessories on that stuff was this sheer amazing, the, the amazing work that they did. Yeah, it's, it flakes about like a crayon. Yeah, you gotta be, you can't breathe on it too hard. That's for sure. So, but yeah, guys, that's what I'm looking at doing. Uh, considering the classifieds are out, uh, yeah, Michaels want me to uh, try to take these GI Joe guys, even though, like I said, they're. Uh, as far as posability, they're not that great, but it, but for what we're trying to do with them is clean them up, get all their accessories, and put them in a bubble like this. And I'm looking at trying to uh, get enough artwork designed up from like the three and three quarter inch figures and blow it up to where it'll fit in here to kind of give you that kind of feel. But yet it's going to be in the bubble, which to me, if you're buying something, you're wanting it in the bubble and it to stay pretty. It's not about the posability. And these guys, they look good sitting on the shelf. They're just not made to take it out in the backyard to have any kind of serious cool play time for sure. So they are what they are. They're a display piece, and that's what we want to do. We're trying to make them more displayable versus the way they are right now. Chuckles, uh, just putting it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So a few of those old... Uh, is that some of that plastic, they didn't make it out of number two. I can't remember what number of plastic they used, but the ones that wasn't a number two plastic, you got to, it's almost when, now I say this, almost all older weapons, if it's the harder plastic, even on Mego stuff, get you a cup of hot water, put it in the microwave for two minutes, and soften that bad boy up before you go to put it on. If you don't soften it up, whether it be shoes or some kind of harness thing going over or some kind of stiffer belt, just dip it for about 30 seconds before you go messing with it. You'll, you, you'll thank me later on for sure. See, you have to be uh, gentle with that stuff. That's for sure. Yeah, it's 100% because if you're not, like I said, old Mego stuff, and even uh, I've not had any issues with any of the new Migos. But you do got to watch out on uh, some classic TV toy parts. I think like the uh, the white belt or the brown uh, like Robin style belt. You got to watch some of them have been snapping over the past year or so. And uh, like I said, you just got to be careful if, it, if you feel intention or, you know, dip it in the hot water and you'll be. Don't use a heat gun. 
I had a, a talk with a bunch of guys. One guy said, oh, I love, I'd rather use a heat gun. I'm like, if you use a heat gun, it's a 50-50 chance you're going to melt something. You put it in boiling water, you're not going to damage the product. So simple as that. Don't take the chance with a heat gun. It takes one sneeze or one turn in your head, one little wiggle, something. And it's, once it melts, it's melted. It's gone. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, see. Yeah, 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 you cannot. See, the heat gun is the worst thing you could think of. 100% man of action. Got, dude, I hope you uh, subscribed to my channel. You really played in on here tonight. Thank you for being here. Hope you join us. And like I said, I'm on Facebook, Sexton Creations. If you want to join me there, I'd usually do a lot of announcements and stuff there. Getting back into that, you can see a lot of my artwork. So glad you're here tonight. Keith, everybody else, Jordell, thank you guys. Uh, we'll have a, maybe a couple more tomorrow. I'm off work. We'll pop them out this week. You guys have a great evening. Kevin the Toy Smuggler. Catch y'all later.